Good morning. I'm Norma. And I'd like to kind of carry on with some of Pat thoughts from yesterday on Philippians. I'm looking at Philippians 4 verses 1 to 9, but I want to read verses 4 to 9 from the Kingdom New Testament by N.T. Wright. Celebrate joyfully in the Lord all the time. I'll say it again. Celebrate. Let everybody know how gentle and gracious you are. The Lord is near. Don't worry about anything. Rather than in every area of life, let God know what you want as you pray and make requests and give thanks as well. And God's peace, which is greater than we can ever understand, will keep guard over your hearts and minds in King Jesus. For the rest, my dear family, these are the things that you should think through. Whatever is true, whatever is holy, whatever is upright, whatever is pure, whatever is attractive, whatever has a good reputation, anything virtuous, anything praiseworthy. And these are the things you should do. What you have learned, received, heard, and saw in and through me. And the God of peace will be with you. Well, like most of us, I don't like conflict. And I either try to ignore it or run away from it. But you know, left unresolved, it will just keep erupting, or it'll leave us with scars that can damage the work of the church. In Paul's letter to the church at Philippi, he openly addresses the elephant in the room. You see, Paul's letters were meant to be read aloud, and he publicly names two women having a conflict, Euodia and Sintich. Now, the purpose was not to embarrass them, but rather as beloved sisters, co-workers, and loyal companions to the work of the gospel, Paul is asking the church to help them resolve their dispute for the sake of the community and for the sake of the gospel. Now, Tom Wright points out that Paul has outlined four ways that as followers of Jesus, we should respond differently. With joy, with gentleness, without anxiety, but in prayer, and by allowing God's peace to guard our hearts and minds. Well, this is radically different from the way our egos tend to respond. You know, we want to win people over to our point of view, or at least let everybody know just how much we've been hurt or wronged. But the grace of understanding opens us to a way that we can use our inner gifts to draw out the gifts of one another. So seek to listen with an open heart and mind to what is stirring in you and what may be lying beneath the words of the other person. Feelings of anger, hurt, or frustration are natural. But be careful. Do not use harsh words which would cause insult or hurt another. It is about learning to move through conflict in love, to build and restore relationships. And for this, we need to prayerfully seek God's will and guidance. We strive to build unity so the message of the gospel isn't hindered by our own egos or agendas. Well, verse 8 presents this daunting list of things we should think on. But can we really control our thoughts? See, I don't think we can consciously replace a negative thought with one that is true or noble but neither should we feed them or pass them along through gossip. Rather, Paul says, to take all our concerns and cares to God. Ask for the peace of God to guard your heart and mind and allow the Holy Spirit to work in you and transform your thoughts. Well, as I began to add final edits to my reflection, I sat watching the courage and strength of the Ukrainian people. A grandmother taking up arms to protect her home and family. A young man trying to push back a Russian tank with his bare hands. And I wondered if these words just seem too trite. You know, life seen from the comfort and safety of a pew, thinking our holy thoughts far 
removed from the reality of the world around us. I believe Paul is inviting us into a new, deeper way of answering the charge, to stand beside the lonely and oppressed, to push back against injustice and racism. Gentleness is a measure of incredible strength and integrity. Joy comes from the assurance that God is in control, not us. And as we listen to the voice of God, we are called to respond with action. I'd like to leave you with this prayer that I found in the Proud Anglican's newsletter, which is kind of a twist on St. Francis's prayer. So listen to these words, and then take up the challenge to be part of the healing, the cost of becoming an instrument of God's peace and love. Lord, make me a channel of disturbance. Where there is apathy, let me provoke. Where there is compliance, let me bring questioning. Where there is silence, may I be a voice. Where there is too much comfort and too little action, grant disruption. Where there are doors closed and hearts locked, grant the willingness to listen. When laws dictate and pain is overlooked, when tradition speaks louder than need, grant that I may seek rather to do justice than to talk about it. Disturb us, O Lord, to be with as well as for the alienated, to love the unlovable as well as the lovely. Lord, make me a channel of disturbance. Amen. Stay well, my friends. Until next time. Bye for now.